Welcome, everybody, to Relationship Fun and Games. And Fights Clean, Sex Dirty TV. We're super excited to be in our season of peace. The holidays are upcoming here, and we are in episode six, How to Keep the Sex Dirty During. And we're going to tell you a lot more about that topic and even go into some details with our interviewees on their bio and their backgrounds because they're super fun. But first, we just want to introduce you to them and get a sense of who they are as a couple. You know on our show, we pretty much only like to... Uh, Raj, can you change the screen there so it's the video? Great. Uh, we really like to uh, interview couples, not just relationship experts, which these this couple is, um, but even if is, someone is an expert and their beloved isn't, we like to have couples on because it's not just what they say, it's the what you can see and feel in the in-between. So welcome, Sierra and Rono. We'd love you to just uh, introduce yourself by sharing a little bit, you know, whether it's your relationship motto or how, you know, how you met. I know you guys have been together a lot longer than you've been in a romantic relationship. What, do you, what, what should our audience know about you two as a couple? Oh, my gosh. We always, no matter what, can find our way back to what we call the friendship box. Um, so whether the flights are dirty and the sex is clean, <laughs> or, the flights. or the other way around, <laughs> which is what we're, <laughs> we're still able to get back to the friendship box. What, what would you say? Oh my God. Yeah. Well, the, we like to joke that it's been what? You said 2,400 years. Yeah. Some sometime around years. the birth of Christ. <laughs> we've been together. So. <laughs> like, uh, but in this particular lifetime, I knew him as a wee little tot. And uh, he grew up hanging around my porch and mowing my family's lawn and singing I with like my to younger say, I'm sisters. I'm still mowing her lawn. But yeah. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> And the sex really begins. But yeah, I, I, I think we, it's, just, it's just been a long, a long friend lawn mowing, the wife lawn mowing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, it's just, awesome. I just think. Well, have been friends since you were kids, but how long have you been a couple and how long have you been married? A couple for ten years, right? No, wait. Eight okay, years. eight years. Business partner for ten. Couple, couple for eight. eight married, married for six. six. <laughs> okay, so you started as neighbors, and then became friends, and then became business partners, and then became lovers, and then became husband and wife. That's awesome. Yep. Love that. <laughs> and it's so great to meet with companies that work together because there's a whole new, I mean, there's so many challenges day to day in life, but then you throw in the layer of your business and your financial livelihood, and it can bring a whole other layer of spice and challenge and opportunity. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> right? The, uh, the, the, the eye rolling and the head shaking of acknowledgement. <laughs> right. <laughs> Raj and I learned very early on, never under any circumstances reach over your beloved to touch their laptop when you're working, when they're working on it. <laughs> yeah, that's a good rule. Yeah, that's a very good rule. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's uh, introduce the topic tonight and let them know a little bit about your background with your bio. But again, we're just so happy to have you two here. Um, and those watching, we actually met uh, Rono and Sierra. They've been... Uh, friends of friends for some time and we kind of heard about each other and we just met over uh, the Thanksgiving holiday weekend and just absolutely became fast friends love, love, and love them. super excited to have them on the show so so quickly and right away. So thanks for jumping in you guys. Yeah. Okay, so let's yeah, yeah, great. So let's jump into our content for the night, right? Yes. So if you're a first time comer to our show uh, you might not know, but we divide our content into how to keep the fights clean and the sex dirty. Yeah, when we got married, that's what someone told us. I wish we could remember who that was. And they just said, this is all you need to know for a long and happy lasting marriage. Keep the fights clean and the sex dirty. And I thought that's so great. Raj and I like to say, save be a nasty for your sex life. And if you look at our logos, the fights clean has the halo, the sex dirty has the horns, so just know when to wear the halo and when to put on the horns. That's all you need to know for an awesome marriage. We're gonna give you a lot more specific details so you don't, you can do more than just uh, put on a Halloween costume of some halo and horns, but you can really get into living um, as an angel and living as a devil, devil in all the appropriate places. Yeah, and one of the things that we found when we were working on our relationship or playing in a relationship, as Gabby likes to say, is that it was hard to find things that applied in the moment. You know, you're in the middle of an argument and you need like a lifeline or a tool that actually helps you navigate 
the argument or you know you're leading up to sex and what's like the top tip there right yeah and, rather than a big general theory or something you know I mean there's there's a uh, you know even someone was talking about attachment theory the other day and it's great to know your type but it's real important that we make memorable fun light-hearted practices that you can apply in the moment when they matter the most. Yeah, so we broke our content into how to keep the fights clean and the sex dirty, like we said, and then we further divided it into before, as it starts, during, and after. Yeah, what you do in the middle of a fight is very, very, very different than what you do <laughs> after a fight. <laughs> or <in the> before. <laughs> yeah, and you know, as we're growing up, we're never taught how to have a great relationship. And so what we do is we resort to what we call unsatisfactory solutions. Instead of solutions that actually work, we have these things that we learn either from our parents or our friends or from TV. The default, the unconscious pitfalls. All those like mechanisms that you default to and they don't work. And so what we're doing is we're replacing those with things that actually do work and can lead to greater intimacy uh, and uh, a playful, peaceful, passionate relationship. So tonight we're focusing on passion and we're focusing on how to keep the fights dirty during. So this is right in the heat of it, right? The exciting part. Um, speaking of exciting parts, about, yes, about halfway through the show, uh, we'll go ahead and make the Hangout portion live. So if you'd like, you can come on and ask questions either in the chat or even on video. Um, and if you do, we'll go ahead and give you a copy of our cheat sheet, which is, includes 16 of our top tips Summarize just into one sentence so you have a quick, easy reference. Because you know, when you need the tips the most is when you can think about them the least. So it's great to even print one of these out and put it in your wallet or your, you know, dashboard of your car or wherever it is that you might see it on a regular basis. I like easy reference. You should see my refrigerator. It's covered with tips. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I want a picture of that. <laughs> you should see our refrigerator. Our. Yes, Raj is having me working on saying our. <laughs> so, I know, no, as no, the, right, right. so you may need to refresh your browser window at that time, but we'll let you know, and you can click that join the Hangout button and jump in the Hangout with us. Okay, so so a little background on our beauties, our awesome interviewees, as I like to say, and you know, if you've ever watched the show before, you know that I love alliterations. Yeah, go ahead and show all of them. You need all of them there. Them. Yeah, so these, these, as I would like to refer to them as the pleasure provocateurs, there's lots of lovely descriptions of them here. Um, and while they do work just in relationship in general, they have a specific and special flair in the realm of sensuality and sexuality that we really appreciate because Raj and I know as much as we focus on fights clean and sex dirty, we're best at being playful, we're second best at being peaceful, and we're third best at the being passionate. So it's always really um, exciting for us when we have someone that's not only an expert in that area, but they really bring the other areas. They bring the lightness, they bring the play, and um, the two of you totally do that. So dynamic duo, pleasure provocateurs, um, from Lifestylized, and also, what is your other website? Hot, I know we're going to show it at the hot end, but I don't have it listed. Love. Yeah, Hot Sexy Love. Uh, HS, HSL, Hot Sexy <laughs> Love. <laughs> <laughs> so anything else you'd like us to know about your background? I mean, there's so much that you do from coaching to the conscious, beautiful ceremonies that you lead, um, and of course, just being these ambassadors of fun. Um, I so, so appreciated your bio when I first saw it. I'm like, these are my kind of people. <laughs> hmm, let's see, what would we add? Um, well, we've, we've, you know, we've danced in and out of many things in our lifetime, and uh, we used to have a magazine to empower women, actually, and that's how, that's the business that we came together on. And uh, so we've had a lot of co-creative, collaborative, things and we've also helped people in their business as well so but we're really more well suited and more well pleased and pleasured when we're helping people in their life and of course stylizing their life which in this includes relationship yeah and I think the biggest piece too is oh, yeah, go ahead. because of no, the, no, go ahead. The, the friendship go ahead. because of our long 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 friendship it gave us a really unique understanding where one day the the we were in the office and it's like, yeah, everything's fine. And she's like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, cool. And then the, the day after it switched from business to romantic, all of a sudden it was like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, why are you saying it like that? And she's like, why are you doing it like that? And we're like, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, so we have a really <laughs> perspective on how to help people communicate with one another. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And I know you work with mostly women and um, couples, but who's the, the ideal uh, person or couple for you to, to work with? Good question. Um, definitely conscious couples who've been around the block with their personal development and have a lot of tools under their belt, and yet they can't quite seem to make it work in certain arenas. A lot of power struggle kind of stuff, I think, because we we know that dynamic so well, and the, the, you know the the miss the 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 flip flop of the masculine feminine energies and how to navigate that. So those are usually and power couples specifically. Um, is our expertise. Is like our expertise. If, if you're running yeah. your business together or you are, um, you know, on a, on the same trajectory as a couple, like we love to work with you because it's just so much more juicy that way. And we have mm -hmm. all the school, the, it's amazing. The, the, the further we go down each year and we look back at any of our friends that are like, Oh, we're on year three or four or five. It's like, we, it's, we've already seen that. And it's amazing how, it doesn't matter what the relationship is, it's the same patterns. Yeah, there's definitely a yeah. cycle. <laughs> well, I and love then, that. So you are the pleasure provocateurs for the power couples. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> pa, 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 pa. <laughs> yes. Well, you know we like our P3s around here. Awesome. Well, let's go ahead and dive into tonight's content. But again, so great to have you here. Just a joy to be around in person. And now we get to work together too. Well, we call it work, but really we're, we're playing together. Yeah. We get to play together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So tonight's topic, as we said, is keeping the sex dirty during. And if you're watching the show tonight because you're specifically interested in that topic, if things just aren't clicking or maybe sexy time isn't just quite as sexy as it was in the past and you want to kind of get your mojo back, um, you might want to check out some of our other resources, including past episodes. Um, you know, we have how to lead and listen uh, and be forceful, top tips for a brave, bold, and blissful sex life, a path to broadening your pleasure boundaries. I loved that episode. And you may also take a look at our blogs. Just look for this symbol that you see here with the heart, with the horns, with the during shaded. And we have all sorts of different blogs and articles and even some what we call our quick tip video clips. Raj, if you go to the next slide, they can see the quick tip video clip for this week, which is called The Three Nose of Naughty. And Sarah's going to take that link and put it in the comments. Um, and so we're going to tell you right now about this one tip. We're going to give you one tip on how to keep the sex dirty during. And I'm going to turn it over to Rono and Sierra so that they can share all of their juicy tips. I think we've got four or five of the juicy tips from them today. Can't wait for that. I know, I know. But I encourage you, um, go ahead and take this uh, link for this uh, video. And if this is something that's helpful for you or you want to have a reminder, I'm all about using structures and things that live outside of you to remind you so you don't have to remember. So you might even save the link on your phone so when you open your phone, you can see the icon there and just click it. Um, and it may be this one, it may be maybe one for, you know, keeping the fights uh, clean and during an argument, you know, just keep those things on hand so that when you need them the most, you're like, you don't have to say, what was that tip? Um, and even if you watch a five minute video, it can even calm you down for the moment too, or hopefully steam things up if it's for keeping the sex dirty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's dive into our tip for the night. The three nose of naughty. So this is one of our favorite fun tips that helps stretch those boundaries, you know, because our sex life can, it doesn't have to, but it can get stale and predictable. And you don't know where it's safe to push the boundaries with your partner. You know, is that too much? Is that, can I ask this? And so what happens is we just shut down and we really contract and yep. we don't get to sexual boundaries. And then TV becomes almost as fun as making <laughs> <laughs> We actually even have a coin that you can flip that says sex on one side and TV on the other. And then we have another coin, though, that's a little more even more fun that says nice or naughty. So you got a little couple coin tosses, you know, you got a whole different evening on your hands there. So with this tip, the three nose of naughty, it, as most of our tips do, they arise from us working on things, and a lot of them come in the moment. And we were having this really sexy night, and I wanted to we're ask We're in front Gabby, of the fireplace and everything. Yeah, and everything. And I wanted to ask Gabby about this this idea that I had, but I was afraid to ask her, and this three nose of naughty tool came it up. It just totally yeah. emerged, because he suggested that we do this thing, which really I don't even remember what it was. I do. You can tell me <laughs> later. <laughs> 
And um, he, so he proposed this option. And, you know, when I was looking at my own pleasure boundaries, it was definitely at my edge. And it wasn't so far out of the edge that I was like, oh, gross. I don't even want to talk about that. I can't believe you suggested that, which I wouldn't say anyways. Um, but um, it did have me take some pause. But I didn't want to completely scare him off. I wanted him to know, I, I just need a little more encouragement. So, Raj, go ahead and show them the three no's here. So, the first no is the strongest no. That's like, no, um, I'm totally uncomfortable with you even talking about that take it off the table um, I can't even relax and feel safe to enjoy sex if we're even discussing that <laughs> that's a very clear no there <laughs> but then there's the no of the like well you know it's possible but it's really gonna take something I'm not interested and I'm not even seeking to be convinced but I'm not gonna completely close the door I could be convinced but where I went with the, this no with Raj was no, it's like the kind of coy no, like no. And, and I was like, like yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I was kind of saying like, no, not yet, but you're close. I'm interested, but I'm not ready to say yes. So keep drawing. I want you to convince me. It's kind of like, so you're saying I got a chance. So you're saying I got a chance. Yeah. So those three no's not, of course. Of course, yes means yes and nothing less. This is not what we're talking about consent. This is when consent is there between two partners and you're really just exploring those pleasure boundaries because you don't want to be walking on eggshells. You don't want to be afraid of saying something. You don't want to totally react harshly if someone proposes something that you're not interested in. So here's a way of bringing a little play that if you're not ready to say yes and go for it on how you might say no and communicate a lot more. Beautiful things about this tool is that it encourages more expansion of boundaries instead of shutting down, which then leads to less expansion of boundaries, which leads to a spicier and spicier sex life, which is yummy. Yes. So we do have the action option. We want to wrap up by giving you some specific instruction on what you could do to put this in play. But before we do that, um, Sierra and Rono, any thoughts on this three nose of naughty here? <laughs> Well, I love it. I love the three stages, and I think that that makes a lot of sense. I, what I love about you both in the short time I've gotten to know you is how you're able to break down very um, nor complex <laughs> yeah. or challenging things. Yeah, into like simplistic action items. So just do this. Yeah, yeah. Just oh. you know, one, oh, two, three. Okay. This no, that no, that no. <laughs> we like to call them uh, easy access, easy on ramps to access intimacy. Yes, you know, we often thought in relationship work, it often can be very intellectual or it can be very spiritual or very theoretical, but not so often is it like playful and practical. And those are the two that we're always looking for. It's like, and, and, what, and this is why I use alliterations, you know, with the pleasure provocateur is because there's brain science that it actually helps people remember it. It's fun but it actually helps as well. So I like to bring those playful and practical in. So thank you for, for that. Yeah, well, let's give them a practical. You want to share the action option and then we'll dive into Sierra and Renos? Sure, here, okay. You're great there. Show there. One moment, we'll bring that back up. You've got that highlighted for some reason, but that's fine. I don't know why that's highlighted, but you know. It's pink, so it's can't pink. go wrong with that. Is the screen shared, though? Can they see that? Uh, it will be in just a moment. Here we go. Okay. Okay, so we like to do our little fun play on oh, this. Oh, our theme, right? Uh -huh. It's Mission Possible. Mission Possible. But we play with Mission Impossible. Your action <laughs> option, should you choose to accept it, it's just an option, it's an invitation, but if you invest just a little bit of your intention, your attention, and action spread out over time in these baby steps, then your relationship doesn't have to be all this dramatic. You know, people sit down and say, well, we need to talk. <laughs> well, that's because you haven't been playing the games, and you're waiting until you've swept all this crap under the rug, and then you got this big, ugly, smelly monster under the rug in the center of the room, and then it's a whole drag to clean it all out and get the vacuum and change the vacuum bag and okay we're going a little far with instead of all here. that <laughs> <laughs> so the first you guys want to expand the uh the image so people can see it better it's uh mm -hmm. if you're able a little to small there okay Let's see if i can do that i'm just having a little problem with the slide here what if it's hidden on place uh it's not showing up 
Is that any better? No, nah, it's a little better. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. There we go. That's too big. Yeah. It's fine. You can scrub the floor. There. OK. That's good. <clears throat> Thank you. OK, so the first step is and also, um, Sarah, if you would go ahead and copy these, uh, the action option instructions and put them in the comments, then those looking at this on the page can also see it there as well. All right, so the first step in advance. So you want to tell your beloved that you've got some fun ideas to spice, spice things up. Honey, I've got a game. You want to play? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to tell them about the three no's of naughty. You might want to tell them about this tip if they don't already know, because they won't know what you're doing, and your intention to create a relaxed, fun way to explore those outer edges of your pleasure boundaries, while always respecting where those boundaries are. Right? Yes. You don't want to push beyond, because then your partner is going to contract, and then the tool isn't going to work. Yeah, keeping your beloved at the edge of their comfort zone is exciting. Pushing them off the cliff of their comfort zone is not <laughs> exciting. They're going to clamp up. They're going to contract. If you want you know, your woman, your beloved to surrender, if you want to surrender and be ravaged, well, you can't do that without feeling safe first. So we want to make sure that you've got those boundaries held, but stretch just a little bit. <laughs> All right, in the second step, you want to get started. So go ahead, set the stage, initiate some sexy time, get involved, right? Um, and you can go ahead and take a look at some of the tips under Sex Dirty before and as it starts if you want some more tips in that area. But when you're in it, when you're kind of on ramping into sexy time, you know, just remind your beloved about this practice of the three no's and naughty, and you're going to let them know that, that you're going to um, use that to let them know how interested or confronted they might be. You might even say, hey, make some edgy suggestions. You might say to them, hey, I'm going to make some edgy suggestions. So there's no surprise. This is a fun game. And again, play with baby steps. You don't want to throw them over the cliff of their comfort zone. Find out where their comfort zone is and take them just a little bit further. And then listen for those three no's of naughty, what those are, and be really, really respectful of where those uh, pleasure boundaries lie. And you might practice the tonality of the three no's because that's kind of important, right? No. It's, <laughs> it's no. Like, yeah, tell me. Even though I'm saying no, and it's like, no, like question mark, but I'm not sure, maybe. And there's like, no. no. <laughs> yeah, we had some friends that described some of the pleasure boundaries as um, fantasies, desires, and needs. And so a fantasy was something that yeah, they didn't necessarily want it to do, but it was fun to talk about. Uh, a desire was something that they really wanted to do, but they, they didn't have to have it. They just really wanted it. And a need is like, no, this actually is a basic need for me and if we're going to be have a healthy sex life. And I found that really helpful when you're talking about, you know, things that you want to do and how to stretch your pleasure boundaries. But this is a really good distinction to have that you can say to someone, hey, this is just a fantasy. I don't even necessarily want to do this. Um, <clears throat> or let them know, hey, this one's really important to me. Can we find a way of getting as close to this as a reality as possible? This gives them some good information. So that's the three no's of naughty. So hopefully that one's helpful for you. Oh. Yeah, and one of the things that you'll find is if you're using the tool, even if you get a no, um, it, it lubricates your ability to actually explore. Because you now you have a way to explore, and you're like, okay, that one's no, but I can try this one. <laughs> and it really starts opening up your ability to explore, which we mostly don't have access to. Now, we'll slip in one other uh, resource here. Um, for those of you watching, there's a website called Mojo, M-O-J-O, Upgrade. And it lists all these different sexual fantasies. And you and your beloved can go through on your own and fill out the survey. And it will email you the results for only the fantasies you both checked. So that wild and crazy thing that you really didn't want them to know, um, it'll just, yeah, whew, right? Okay. <laughs> it's like an adult version of like, you know, memory game or playing match the cards or whatever. You're looking for where the match is. Um, and if you don't want to do the email, like um, you can also even just print it out like a menu. You maybe print it out and you circle a few things that you want to do, give them to your beloved. You could print it out and cut them all up and put them in a jar and just pull one out for the night and see what strikes your fancy. So a lot of fun games to um, bring in a little bit more um, opportunity to stretch that pleasure boundary. So I snack in a little second tip there. We want to make sure we've got a good uh, a half an hour left here where we can dive in and talk about these five. And I'm sure we're going to come up with some in the moment, even more ideas as well on how to keep the sex dirty during. 
<laughs> okay, so we've shown uh, some of the talking points up on screen here. So just feel free, um, uh, uh, Rano and, and Sierra, to flow in there with whatever you feel like talking about. Awesome. So I, I have to I'll out myself. Not that I don't like dirty sex. Our sex is more playful sex. So it's but it's in that same realm so <laughs> i'll just i'll say that um well it gets pretty dirty when we get enough coconut oil done. that is very true it's hard to call it dirty <laughs> i guess i have a negative connotation to dirty and it's like it's so fun how is this dirty? you know i'm so glad you said that though Vano. i'm really glad you said that because we do often clarify that when we say sex dirty we mean like being naughty in the best way possible and you know they're just you know expressions that we use in the phrase but i really appreciate you saying that because we too we don't hold any of this as dirty in a bad way it's dirty in a good way um so yeah the first one the one that we use almost all the time especially when because we're in biz in business together and we're constantly working on projects and I know similarly to you both you know Raj you take consulting gigs and I take consulting gigs and there's there's lots of different things that people we're, we're in high demand so people <laughs> are are looking for us so we're, we're like oh my god we're so tired how do we have even time for sex so a simple little fun thing to do is say how about five minutes of anything ooh well, I got five <laughs> we are so stealing that one <laughs> <laughs> And, it and the way you said that, can you say that again with yeah. a little head tilt? Um, right. Say that again. How about five minutes of anything? <laughs> and so yeah. if you have a jar of coconut <laughs> oil in your hand, it goes the extra mile. Oh, um, yeah. coconut we oil highly is, recommend coconut yeah. oil for everything. It just gets everything moving mm -hmm. in all the best ways. <laughs> You know, you can, we did have two episodes ago. We had Susan and Tim Bratton on, and they were talking about a um, uh, or, orgasm practice that they do. It's similar to um, OM and orgasmic meditation from One Taste, mm -hmm. but it's more directed for couples rather than just individuals. Oh yeah. Um, and at any rate, yeah, I know that's something I really enjoyed um, that, that modification they did. But they were talking about the zones. You know, as a woman, you can't go straight for the bullseye. You know, you got to kind of start on the outer edges, the hands and the ears. And that's zone, you know, that's the outer zone, zone three. Then zone two is the inner thighs and anything getting close to the breasts or to the genitals. And then zone one is the actual genitals. And so they were talking and they said, okay, zone two, thighs and the rest of the body, that's coconut oil. Zone one is avocado oil. Oh, avocado? Okay. Yes, avocado oil. And they then just sent us a little bottle as a gift. And let me tell you, they're onto something there. <laughs> so <laughs> coconut oil in one hand, avocado oil in the other, five, five minutes, minutes, and you got a party. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> I know. The only way we use avocado oil on is better popcorn. <laughs> it's delicious on <laughs> it's popcorn. It's really good on popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, yeah, five minutes of anything like is. Um, as it sounds, you you choose, hey, I'll choose, I'm going to choose what I'm going to do to you for five minutes, mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to do that to you. And it could be just, I could be kissing your hand, I could be kissing your neck, I could, mm -hmm. you know, just give you a massage, like whatever it is. And then as soon as the five minutes up, I do recommend, it's kind of like if you ever have gone to a, a strip club or something, you get one dance with the with the stripper. So it's, it's almost like one song or two songs yeah. is about five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> We, we like some good um, EDM, so those tend to be longer, so those are great. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm totally watching the clock. We're not always. <laughs> we, when exactly. we first started, we, we actually did time it, and yeah. it, it did help just to give a gauge of it, and so nobody felt like they were getting gypped. Um, <laughs> but it, the, the only rule to five minutes of anything. I have 30 seconds left. Exactly. <laughs> I know. Wait. <laughs> yeah, totally. The only rule is obviously the safe and all that good stuff. But the only rule is if you engage in a round, if you take a round of five minutes, you have to give a round of five minutes. And that's 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 part of the reciprocation yeah. process. Mm -hmm. But it can be, it can be take a round, give a round. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And do you want to talk about five minutes of healing? 
Yeah, so, well, five minutes of anything, what I love about it is it can really lead to, it's anything and it can lead to anything, and often it does. It usually leads to awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. usually it's, it definitely just gets lubed up. Um, the five minutes of healing is very specific. I mean, you know, we sit at our computers and we're not as mobile as we'd like to be when we're in the throes of all the to-dos and the action items and projects. So the healing is really a commitment to really just working out the crunk and giving each other complete body love. Um, you know, so we pick certain areas, but okay, you're going to work on my hips and then I'm going to work on your neck and, and it's specific for healing. Again, it usually, usually leads to uh, a lot more yep. and it's so nurturing and so great to know that it's not, it's not, we're not trying to get into sex. We're not attempting to make that our goal. It's literally just an act of just other. taking care of each other in a really nurturing way. That yep. was beautiful. So what what's an example? I may have missed it, but like, give me an example. Five minutes of healing. What does that look like? So five minutes of healing, a good example of five minutes of healing is to be like, is to be like so right now, I'm, I'm having a lot of extra tension on my IT band on both sides of my legs. And I haven't been doing as much yoga as I'd like. And so I would say, hey, are you up for five minutes of healing? And she'd be like, sure. And so I'd be like, great, can you work on my IT band? And so she would just get some coconut oil or um, avocado, avocado oil. oil. <laughs> and she would just work on my one or both of my IT bands. And then I'd say to her, so, all right, where would you like? And she's like, oh my God, my shoulders are really tight. So I just work on her shoulders for five minutes. And like, do you want to go another round? Yeah, that's great. Okay, great. Could you work on my ass cheek right here? Because that piriformis muscle <laughs> needs to be worked. And it just happens to be a nice erogenous zone for me too. And so it's very convenient that it happens to be sore and she can also work on it. Um, <laughs> and, then we, and, the, and then we'll just switch back and forth until we're either done and tired or it turns into something else. Um, and that that's, no. it's yeah. more specific around supporting each other and working out the crunk as we call it. Yeah, so. the crunky junkies. Mm -hmm. The crunky yeah. junkies. <laughs> I like that you can request five minutes of healing rather than offer. Or both, I guess, right? You can go both directions. Yep. Either and, one, yep. Uh, yep. You know, and we have this expression of on-ramps to intimacy. And, you know, like you said, sometimes you're just so tired and you just don't even have any energy to engage in sex. But just loosening it up a little bit by making a request of something that will make you actually feel good and actually really starting to get intimate with your partner, I love that. Yeah, it really just helps, and it's so nurturing as well. Um, I don't know about you, but I love some good nurturing because it's a battlefield. <laughs> so. Yeah, the life life gets fast and tough and challenging and daunting. So to have that sense of, um, you know, when we talk about the sense of peace, you know, it's your sanctuary, um, and it's really wonderful how when that sense of peace and sanctuary actually does spill over into the passion, because if you're feeling stressed and you're feeling all that tension, it's really hard to get mm -hmm. into your soft, you know, more pleasured or pleasuring state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should love the yeah. five minutes too. You know, sometimes you can want to ask for some massage and the person thinks it's gonna be like a 20 minute massage and they don't have energy for that. Yeah, love it. It's so great. Yeah. So great, yeah. stealing it. Doable. It's doable. <laughs> right, right, right like size size yeah. Exactly. We had some friends recommend on one of the show, um, they called it emergency sex. And so, you know, after being together so long, you know, you weren't as horny for each other as often. You have to generate it or have, you know, dates more often and really bring that energy. And so they had an agreement that if either one of them were feeling horny for each other, they'd kind of declare emergency sex <laughs> and they could even just go for a quickie. Um, but sometimes, you know, quickie is it certainly isn't five minutes, at least not for us. So, for 4th of July, we were getting ready for people to come over and Raj said, how about some emergency sex? I said, honey, people are due here in five minutes. He said, I just need four. <laughs> 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 I said, okay, all right. I set the timer for four, and sure enough, I think it was like three, three minutes and 45 seconds or something like that. <laughs> well done, lad. Well done. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Great to have another another conference. Something in between. It might not be fully sex, but, you know, five minutes of anything. I really love that. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right, so what do we have next here? Oh, epic Saturday nights. Okay, 
please. You just want to sing a song about that one, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's an if you're driving a car, pull over to the side of the road. If you're standing, please sit down. Um, <laughs> this is this is this is a. Uh, this is by far the most transformative practice that we've been in. Mm -hmm. And of the 52 Saturday nights, give or take in a year, um, this past year, 30 of them have been epic Saturday nights. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we, have a, we have a real commitment, especially between May and October for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're well, in our love shack. We're in the love time. shack we're by the, the lake. We're in the love shack <laughs> by the lake, so. so. that helps. Yeah. Um, but Epic Saturday Nights is where you set the intention early on. And uh, if it's, if you were usually with our, our families or around and things like that, we live in co-community a lot, just like you guys as well. And uh, we set the intention that we're going to go in. We usually start with what we call sacred space, which is a whole other conversation and a beautiful thing. But if you go to hotsexylove.com, which is on our, you can get a whole sacred space guide and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and Epic Saturday nights sometimes stop at midnight, usually more like 6 a.m. Um, and <laughs> they, uh, it, it is. I mean, take over. I'm, so I'm, the intention <laughs> is that it's, it's got more moment. He's already there. He's like on the next Saturday night date. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> exactly. It's got to be epic, right? So you know that going in, you know, there's, a, there's some lubrication needed. That's why we start with sacred space. We are big into ritual and ceremony, and um, we have medicine bundles, and we like to set up altars, and those altars shift. So we'll usually start sitting down with some sort of altar, or rock form, crystal formation that leads us in medicine cards, oracle cards. And we'll start with a deep topic about what we want to really bring out in each other or understand about each other. And because it's set in the container of sacred space, it's it's for the highest good. You know, things might get a little scratchy or itchy at times, but it's for the highest good and it's to up-level ourselves spiritually, emotionally, and sensually and sexually. Yep. So it usually starts out that way. We always have a really good jam going you guys get to hear our music um style yeah. <laughs> a couple of days ago and uh so you know we'll be in the middle of deep talking and a song will come out and one of us will get up and start dancing and and then eventually we feel very clear and we'll move into the bedroom where we'll add in those games if like we need five to. minutes of anything or speak or do or all those other ones that we'll, we'll, that we'll, be we'll get to. more into um and the the intention is to take our take our night to as our fun, fabulous, playful, pleasurable extremes as possible and explore each other really, <laughs> explore each other really well. Um, go the distance. Go do do the things that we haven't done before. Try a different thing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really about being vulnerable mm -hmm. and being like, okay, um, maybe you could touch me right here. And it feels a little weird, but let's try it. Okay, how about I touch you right here? Oh, okay, interesting. And it's all about mm -hmm. being playful and fun. And for me, it's about her having as many orgasms as possible and me like cultivating my orgasm throughout the night so that it builds and builds and builds and builds. Um, and so that way it's not just like, Oh, we're done. It, it really is like this big buildings until an epic proportions. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's usually fun when the, all right, let's go to bed. The sun's coming up and, and then we sleep all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> And how often do you like to do that? Well, it's Very often. Get a good thirty Saturdays a year in like that, nice. right? Love there, that. yeah. We got we got to get into some training there, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, like we said, when we're in summertime, we spend uh, up in upstate New York, right on the lake. We have a property and we have a, a little love shack. We literally call it the love shack, and it's, it's specifically because we're in nature, away from everything, under the stars, in this back field next to the water. So it's so magical and so removed and and so clean energetically that it's the and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so there's really, that's what we do. I mean, nobody's around. We're not connected to anybody. We're not, like, distracted by parties or social events or anything like that. It's like we're going in, and we're going to commit to as many of these as possible because it's it's like summer loving. It's the summer loving time. Totally. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about going out to New York in uh, May or June this year, so maybe we'll come up and check out your love shack. Oh, yes, definitely. Yes, 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 yes. We're cool. upgrading the love shack this year, too, so <laughs> it'll be even more lovable. <laughs> Cool. Just and then uh, the other two on our list, I'm sure we're probably getting close on time here. 
Um, well, we'll oh, yeah. I just want to let anyone watching that they can the join the hangout button if they'd like to you might need to refresh your browser to make that button live okay and uh, you can join with any too. questions or anything <clears throat> about you said sometimes things get scratchy i think um it's crunchy what was the word you used scratchy. itchy and scratchy <laughs> no, no you said uh, no, no. crunky are the crunky junkies the body or the other <laughs> Monkey well, no, it's more. I think what you were saying is that sometimes, even when you create and curate these awesome epic evenings, that there's like little landmines. I don't know if you guys experience that, and especially early on when you're doing these kinds of things, I think we get better and better as we use the tools. But you know, little things can derail a whole epic evening, and um, you know, I just like to encourage people to like become ninjas at navigating the landmines because the each landmine you navigate, the evening can even get that much better. Because that's like one little thing that you can, again, turn the problem into the path that we like to say. Like the little thing that might come between you, you can actually navigate it and bring you closer instead of like ruining it. So I just wanted to throw that little thing in for people to, to explore on the second. Yes. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, which is perfect segue into the speaker do uh, process with us because um, those landmines are usually just have to do with the places that we're holding back or we're fearful. And, and that's when it's, you know, where we got the wound, the, the gaping wound ready to be, you know, cauterized or something and it doesn't feel good all around. So we came up with a game based on truth or dare, um, called speaker do, and it's all about vulnerability and sharing something or speaking something or doing something that promotes that vulnerability. And so as much as we know each other and have we've, we've dove so deep in our lives together on different things, there's still places where I realize when things get crunchy, I'm looking at what's still underneath that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, and, and we find out like how much we don't really know each other at all, mm -hmm. even though we've, you know, we spend so much time together. So the basic premise of speaker do is you you just you look at your partner and you tilt your head in that sultry way again, um, and you just say hey, speaker do, and then she will choose if she wants to say something or speak about something or do something. So a truth or a dare, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so she'll she'll speak about something or do something, and then so I'll say hey, speak or do. Speak. Me or you. You. And so when she chooses me, that means I get to choose what she speaks about. If she chooses herself, if she says me, then she gets to choose what she shares. So it adds a whole other layer of, ooh, where do I feel comfortable? And then all you need is a little dice. And we did find out that you can also use your phone and say, Siri, roll the dice, and Siri will roll it for you. You're an iPhone. Um, but we, we usually travel with die. I, 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 it's in my bag over there. And we roll it. And if you roll a one, then it's, so let's say you roll the one, and so I'm choosing what you're gonna speak about. Um, it's gonna be something not that big of a deal. So the other night, you you and I were going to bed, and I could tell that you wanted to connect more, but we were both so tired, so we just we both just went to bed. What was going on for you then? Right. So she would just answer that. And then if she, actually, if she rolled a six, it could be something a little bit more naughty or you're or, really or i'm really know. curious that i want to know that she would never tell me and i want to know so i'm going to ask her um but the six means that you're riding the edge of comfort like almost about to fall off um <laughs> where where one is like eh, no, no big deal and it's then still edgy it's still vulnerable it's all based in vulnerability all based sure. in vulnerability mm -hmm. and and then if it was a do it'd be the same kind of thing so she rolled a six and she chose me to be do i'll be like all right cool you are going to, what did I do that one time? Do you remember? It was oh, I, he said, you're going to pretend that you are the world's, um, uh, you are, you, oh, you're a, you're a professional masturbator and the world tunes in. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the world is watching the world is watching, and, you, and, you and this is your show. Is so your I show. grabbed my phone and like filmed her doing this whole thing. I didn't realize it was actually going to be filmed. I thought I was going to <laughs> pretend. <laughs> So it was, it was, that was her choosing. Yeah. When you said professional, I was just, um, uh, for whatever reason, thinking of like champion, you know, um, masturbator, you know, professional champion. And I, it, I was just imagining you with your big heavyweight champion belt, like coming in, <laughs> like, yes, 
Well, it's only one hand. She needs the other one. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can get pretty creative, and um, and this is probably where the three nos of naughty definitely get to come into play when somebody's choosing your do six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's super fun. So you get to choose in those moments if you want to if you want to take a chance and let somebody else choose for you, if you, you want to be in your own power and choose. So it plays a lot with power and the power dynamic, and also vulnerability and expression and and I'll say that sometimes I'll often I'll, I'll often choose speak me because there's something that I'm, I'm wanting to share and I don't know how else to share it so share it in this context and and maybe even hoping to roll a six so that I can challenge myself to go deep into where my fears lie or what I'm still holding back on or what I really want them to know but just haven't had the courage to share or whatever yeah mm -hmm. And you know, one thing I'm just hearing from all of these tips here is, well, two things. One, love, we love it, you love it, is being lighthearted, you know, bringing some levity to these issues. Mm -hmm. And um, also there's a lot of invitation. You know, there's all of these small games that are inviting, like you're inviting intimacy, like tell me about that. I want to know what you want to know. You know, I want to share myself with you. And you have created a culture of revealing yourselves to each other. Um, which is really fantastic because they, they like to say intimacy is into me you see and so you have all of these opportunities and invitations to see into each other which is really great you know, this is a November 30th so it's the last day of the November Sunday wedding vow of the month which is I promise to always be myself with you and to accept you exactly the way you are mm -hmm. so I love that too about the two of you is that when you have this natural assumption of I accept you I'm curious about you I want to see the fullness of who you are, and I really appreciate the two of you cultivating that curiosity and interest in each other on another level. I'm like, give me that forehead. <laughs> but we can't have the show over because of, I gotta know what this yeah. Magic Mike hundred dollar dance is here. <laughs> all right, well, we'll do this one really quick. So it all started a few years ago. Sierra was enrolled in Mama Gina's program, um, the School, School of, of Womanly Arts. Arts. Her, her new book's out. I recommend it. Pussy, a reclamation. Mm -hmm. If you haven't read it yet, mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> it was my birthday, which is in February, so it was this past February? Yeah, this, February. Was this past February. Oh, so this is recent. It's oh, like yeah. Within the last year. And within the last year. And, uh... Oh, no, I'd gone to see Magic. Magic Mike is not normally my kind of movie. I would not normally go see a movie like that. Although I got a bunch of women... I had heard it was super hot and focused on women's empowerment, so that totally got me involved. So I went to see it with a bunch of girlfriends, and it was hot. If you have not seen Magic Mike 2, not the first one, the second one. Yeah. Um, super hot. It got me totally turned on and yeah, I was... I she was, was like humping a lamp post. I was so... We all left the theater and we're like, what can we, can we, what can we hump? <laughs> <laughs> so, Five anyway. minutes of humping anything. <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh my god. Well, of course, I'm a Nine Inch Nails fan, and they one guy dances to Nine Inch Nails in it, and I was like, okay, you got me now. <laughs> um, but months later, my birthday rolls around or whatever, mm -hmm. and she she worked on this and went to a class and took a whole class on lap dancing and and did this whole lap dance. Which is so vulnerable. Oh my gosh, it's so vulnerable. And I was like, oh no, this is the, how's this gonna go? Like, and it was beautiful and it was amazing. And I got to really see her in a whole different light. So fast forward, um, my coach, she, she, she works with a lot of different realms and the indigenous tribes and all this stuff. But she says, I keep getting this hit that you're supposed to dance for your woman more. And I was like, what do you mean dance for my one more? You know, like, you know, give her some sexy and show her some moves and stuff like that. And it's one of my favorite things about him. Like, I find him so, he moves his hips so well and he dances so well and I could watch him for days. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still stepping into that. Not that I'm starting to like really own that, which is really great. So anyways, um, we had we had we had just uh, had a yard sale this moved summer. out of a whole bunch of stuff yeah. out of the storage and we're just like what do we do with this money cash 
Insert, hundreds, yeah. twenties, ones, a whole big pile, two hundred seventy-nine dollars to be exact. Yeah, and so we're like, <laughs> let's 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 sell all this crap instead of just throwing it out. And so we we had fun, and we I love it because you get to meet so many crazy people. Yard sales. Fast Anyways, forward again. Get back to the back, 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 back at the Love back. Shack. <laughs> it's an epic Saturday night. My coach's voice is in my head, and she's laying on the bed, and I see the pile of money over there, and I'm like, ah. So I crank the music, turn it on, get the lights right, and I, I do a whole like strip tease and playful thing for a good half hour mm -hmm. or more. Oh, yeah. And she's throwing money and putting money in my shorts and rubbing money on my. I'm yeah. doing all sorts of stuff, <laughs> and then eventually she, I'm again, I'm committed to the multiple orgasm for my woman, and so that process is there, and and it just it really turned it into sexy. So now we just trade on and off who's doing sexy dances for each other. And I, I want to add one other thing. The, the power of money right now in this society has been used for a lot of not supportive things. And to utilize money in a playful way, not only to shift your mindset around it, but also bring it in to sexualize it and even pussify it, it's really needed. I mean, besides the fun we can have with each other, it re-alchemizes the energy of currency. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so that's Magic Mike's hundred dollar dance. Say that again. What do you mean by pussify it? What do you mean by pussify it? I see a whole, a whole uh, meme out there. Yeah, um, feminize it, and you know, in a safe way, get get your juices on that money. Uh, the pussy juice, um, as we were actually even uh, working with the medicine of Amrita in the Sandy Rock meditation we did the other night in that San Scan the thousand names of the goddess. The the power of sexual fluid has the power to change this world. And so even though it may feel really taboo to put that on money and put it out in circulation, I mean it dries. It's not, you know, but there's something about really allowing that sexual fluid, feminine sexual fluid in particular, to you know, money's very patriarchal. It's got a lot of energy of patriarchy in it. And so if we can add our juice to the physical money and maybe some other structures out there, which is a bigger vision and a whole other conversation, we could do a whole show on that, um, it's going to impact it in a very profound way. So, and, and I think it's also about softening it. Like, pussifying yeah. it is like yeah, bringing means. in the softness, the, the, the opening, the, the caress, the care. That's also what I see as pussifying. Yeah, yeah that pussifying ultimately means feminizing, bring fem, femininity, feminizing. I don't like that word, but bringing more feminine essence, of divinity to uh, something. Beautiful, awesome. beautiful. Wow. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be one of those nights that we finish the show and go around. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making five minutes of sexy dance. Love <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> Well, I, I wrote down on a piece of paper that this is one of my favorite shows so far, too. I love it. Yeah, he underlined favorite, and I think this is, what, like our 36th episode or something yeah. like that? So. I, I did write it. It's very kind of but you guys are such a delight to be around and we want to show um, go to the next library so we can show them how well this is what's coming up next week but we want to show you how to find out more about Rono and Sierra uh, but next week we will be going into the topic of uh, the fights clean after what do you do after an argument and we'll have Justin uh, Fairman and Megan McDonald they're the founders of Conscious Lifestyle magazine and the topic you know it's all about you know what do you do after the argument so you got through the argument but now what you want to make sure that you don't just move on, that you move forward. We promise you, you can take an argument, a very thing that's pulling you apart, and you can use that same energy and have that bring you closer together. It's amazing because that's what an argument is. It's an area where you're looking to be closer and more vulnerable. And with these tools, you can use the things that generally drive you apart instead to bring you closer. So that's next week, but for where you go from tonight, from here, be sure you go and check out lifestylize.com and Hot Sexy Love. That's just fun to say, isn't it? Huh? Hot Sexy that's, Love. That's why I bought it. Yeah. <laughs> Hot Sexy Love. Step right up. <laughs> call it, um, uh, you know, like, what should you call it? Like raspberry juicy love or juicy raspberry love or something. And she just was like imagining like juices everywhere. I'm like, okay. But I like this. Hot Sexy Love. It's always got too many symbols and syllables. Anything you want to say about either of those uh, websites? Or anything if you have coming up, if you 
to know about? Yeah. So I would say Hot Sexy Love is a, a place where you can go and get some free resources. We have the Sacred Space Guide that we mentioned, as well as um, some videos for some single. This, the Sacred Space Guide is specifically for couples, and then some, there's some videos for women in particular about where we need to turn on our pleasure specifically to not only continue to evolve our relationships, but also call in a man. And then, um, I forget what's the third thing. Oh, and Rano's one, two, three dating uh, uh, strategy yeah. for single women. Which controversial. Very, very controversial, good. but very good. Very uh, effective. Very, say. very effective, exactly. And then there's another opportunity to go deeper and get some uh, another six videos from Rano that empower women. So that's that, that. And then lifestyleize.com if you want to see the whole history of us because it's a mishmash of the last seven or eight years. Yep. And we're due for a rebrand, but you get some, you can kind of go down the Rano and Sierra rabbit hole. Lots of great reasons. Yeah. <laughs> and see all the different ways that we've uh, brought our medicine and magic to the world. And we'll, we'll probably need to update. This is great. I just opened up sexy love and really beautiful here and I actually did before uh, this as well and um, uh, subscribe to your lifestyleize.com and love you know you've got um, the combination between the court the audio training the meditation I love having little recordings you heard me earlier in the call tell people to bookmark you know save the link to that tip so when you have these things on your phone I've got a, a breath meditation that's on my phone you've always got your phone with you right so when in doubt like you put that put that thing to use. So I love that you're giving these um, free resources and a variety of types of resources as well, from videos to meditation, yeah, yeah. all sorts of pieces. Yeah, get them get them now because they're all going to be shifted to, to new 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 resources soon. So stock up on our backlogged uh, awesomeness. Got lots of backlog awesomeness. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> backlog awesomeness, awesome. <laughs> and for those of you that are to relationship hunting games we just want to share a few of our resources here you know you could go and explore our website there's a lot of blogs that we mentioned earlier we also have a free kit our relationship reset quick starter kit so you can go ahead and we'll put the link in here for you to click that click that which includes your free four-part email mini course and also our guidebook on how to keep the fights clean and the sex dirty and then you may also be interested in the ebook, which is the expanded version. It has dozens and dozens of our top tips, tools, and techniques. And um, there are the two URLs for that free gift and for the ebook. Again, we'll put that in the comments so you can easily click that. You don't have to write that down. Now, if you've been with Relationship Fun and Games for a while and you want to know what's totally cutting edge, we just launched the day after Thanksgiving on the 26th, our key three products page. 25 products on there now, but we'll be adding you know, a good 10 products a week. And then we're really excited if you go to the next slide. I should say a little bit sure. about this, that um, one of the things that we're developing is tools, props, per se, that go along with our tips and things. You know, So you have your Fight Spin Sex Dirty Toolkit. And so that's something that's going to be actually coming out soon as a toolkit where you populate all of your tools into your Yep, and also Sarah, you could put that link in there as well, which was what I was transitioning into. So what's coming at RFG, for those of you who like the little bit of anticipation, and this is when the courses start. You'll be hearing more about these in later in December. Um, but we have our three-week communication course coming up starting in the second week of January. And this is really designed to help you navigate those pitfalls of communication and how problem areas bring you closer again. So. Yes, we've taken our favorite communication models and we've pulled them all apart and put them back together in a three-step process about how to send a message, how to receive a message, and how to play a game to get your requests met. Yes. Then on January 23rd, Raj was mentioning that toolkit. We're going to be send, sending this out to you that you can um, snap up one of your own kits just in time for Valentine's Day. So you'll see a bunch more about that. Super fun. We literally have a physical kit. It's got on one side all the fights clean toys and props and on one side all the sex dirty. And then um, February 23rd we're going to be starting our shared relationship vision and you probably if you've watched our show before heard us talk about this tip because the shared relationship vision is our favorite favorite tool about helping you create a map of what you want for your relationship so instead of drama you know dissecting the dramas or what we call problem pathologizing instead you've got a vision for what you want and you're looking at that are we that not I don't want to be that. Yeah, similar to when Ron and Sharon, you guys are talking about creating intention, right? Your shared relationship vision is your intention for your relationship. And while we do have this as a free um, on the blog, you can read this and do this exercise on your own. I commonly hear people say, oh, I got stuck at step two. We got upset because that's it's you need, sometimes need a little support to do it. 
Um, and so, but often doing the individual coaching, coming up for the two-day retreat at our house um, isn't so doable for everyone. So we're going to turn that into a four-week course so we can have more people access that and create those empowering maps. And then finally, just to plant the seed, if you're cold now and you want to plan something to get away into a little bit more warmth, um, we're going to be having a couples retreat in March, March 9th through 11th, a Friday to Sunday. So those are coming up in the future. You'll hear about those. Um, we just are so committed to you having a playful, peaceful, passionate relationship and the work you do to get there to not be work at all, to make it enjoyable, make it fun, make it sexy, make it sacred. Again, Rano and Sierra, that's what I love about you is that you're doing deep work. You're taking people through extensive healing, but you do it in this really lovely, you know, silly sometimes. But when I say lighthearted, I don't always mean silly, but you just bring this play to it that is so attractive and it makes it so much easier to deal with challenging topics. So thanks for being here tonight and for being you. You are much loved and appreciated. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna before we end, we'll get back on screen with you guys next week. Remember, we have our how to keep the fights clean after, and the just putting up uh, Ronos and Sierra's information again so that you can check out what they have to offer. Hard to forget how sexy love. Nice name there. <laughs> awesome. Is there any one tidbit that you'd like to send us off with? Um, yeah, to you know, we're going to turn off this show and uh, go have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> any last tidbit? Yeah. Well, I think I, it's a tidbit that I got from you, um, Gabby. That it's so easy to just get stuck in regular patterns or to see your partner as. Uh, I've, seen them before and they're doing the same things or they are the same thing or I'm the same thing. And I really loved when you said, it, I don't know what you said, but how it worked out was Sierra came up to me and started massaging me. And normally I would have said like, oh no, 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 not right there, right here. But instead, because of your advice, I said, ooh, that's great. And could you do it more here? And it totally shifted the whole dynamic because instead of a no, it was, it was meeting her in improv, and life yes, is like a big and. improv, so it was a big yes and, and uh, I've been bringing that more and more into my life, and uh, the more you can yes and each other, I think you're just gonna be a lot happier in your life. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I was phrasing it as towards versus away energy, um, and the yes and, I love that you're bringing, you know, it's just so great with the improv piece. Yes and, yes and. So mm -hmm. thanks for even reframing that back for me. Much appreciated. Sure. <laughs> yes. And. And. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so, so much for being on our show tonight. Love you guys. And looking forward to seeing you super soon. And thanks to all of you, um, the audience watching out there, whether you're watching live or watching the replay. You know how important love is. Life is too difficult to do alone, but a crappy relationship is worse than none at all. But a wonderful relationship is so worth it. And not just your own, but look out in your own life. If you've gotten something out of this show, if your sister or your friend or your brother or whomever it is is having a tough time, I like to say, friends don't let friends suffer or struggle. So spread the word um, about Rono and Sierra and about relationship fun and games because the world needs more love, including yours and those couples around you. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have you. a great evening. Good night.